Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with our monthly look at the currencies markets. I'm joined by Dan Bell from HiFX as usual. Welcome in again, Dan. Thank you. Um, now we have something fairly uh, frightening going on at the moment in the Ukraine and in, the, in Crimea, especially with the Russian military involved. Um, this seems a, you know, a, the best place to start our review this month. Um, what impact is this having on currency markets and indeed global markets? and particularly on the New Zealand dollar. Yes, um, absolutely. It's been a, a pretty, uh, pretty interesting few days uh, in, in Europe and obviously Russia moving into uh, Crimea and um, what is uh, effectively a military, uh, military intervention. Um, obviously some, some pretty negative uh, rhetoric being, um, being exchanged between the US and, and Russia. Um, so yeah, geopolitical risk has, has flared up significantly over the last few days and that's seen um, already this morning, we've seen a drop in the New Zealand dollar by about 50 to sort of 70 points against the US as investors start to um, anticipate the potential risk of uh, you know, if, if this was to escalate. Um, and uh, the flows back into the US. So equity markets are under pressure today. New Zealand dollar is a bit weaker. The US dollar in this type of uh, environment will always strengthen. And I mean, we obviously don't know what's going to unfold in, in the Ukraine in the next few days and weeks, but uh, we can anticipate um, you know, that if the situation doesn't come to some sort of peaceful conclusion fairly quickly, that there'll be some continued pressure on, on the New Zealand dollar. I would say so, particularly uh, against, against the, the US. Yeah, yeah against yeah. the US. I mean, this this sort of thing. I mean, it makes for for good um, you know good media headlines, and there's always going to be um, a, a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts about the, the the worst case scenarios with this type of thing. But um, yeah, right here, right now, it is a, it is a major event. It is a major geopolitical event, and and who knows where it goes from here. So I think investors are going to be very nervous over the next few days, and that's going to be reflected in uh, in the equity markets, and, and obviously in a stronger US dollar as investors prepare, I suppose, for maybe some of that worst case scenario uh, to to to, uh, to develop. Now, of course, the US Federal Reserve too is uh, always in focus. Um, the new chairman, Janet Yellen, has been making some comments um, and talking about how some of the US economic data has been a bit, bit weaker than, than they would have liked. She's not sure whether this is uh, weather related, um, obviously being winter in the US. Mm. Um, what sort of impact do we think some of these comments might have on, on, on the, or might not have on, on the Fed's tapering of its massive uh, quantitative easing program? Yeah, I mean, I think the the new Fed chairman Janet Yellen has um, has conceded that the U.S. economy has been weaker over the last few months. There's there's no doubt about it. Um, part of that is due to to the extreme weather that they've they've had this winter. So the Northern Hemisphere have had extremely cold weather conditions, particularly in in the U.S., uh, and that's had a, had a big impact across across the whole economy. So I think whilst the market isn't getting too concerned about uh, the, the the strength or the lack of in, in the US. I think there's definitely a few question marks there. In terms of the overall tapering situation, what the Fed are doing with monetary policy, I, I think it's pretty steady as she goes. I think they've started the tapering exercise. They've got uh, a long way to go before they before they uh, actually start raising interest rates, and I think the market is, is, is still really expecting that. Won't, it won't be expecting a, a, a rise in the Fed funds rate until um, the middle of, sort of 2015. So they're just reducing some of the stimulus. They are effectively still printing money. So I think um, we're going to continue to see them taper. They've got another meeting in, uh, in a few weeks. So um, yes, yeah, steady as she goes from the US Fed. Now, um, obviously a, a key report that they look at is the non-farm payrolls report, monthly report on US jobs. Mm -hmm. um, the next one's due out this Friday. What um, are we expecting from that? The expectation for new jobs in the US on Friday is for about 150k jobs and the unemployment rate to hold steady at around 6.6%. Now we've had a, a big drop in US jobs growth over um, over January, particularly. So January, uh, that literally they came in at, at half the, the market's expectations. Um, but the report did uh, did note the huge impact that the uh, that the weather did have. I mean, it was literally um, some of the coldest weather the US has had in many many years. So um, that's had a big, big impact there. Obviously, this report will, will potentially take some of that impact out of it, and will uh, will be an interesting one. And, and it's going to get a lot of focus this week. Uh, it always gets a lot of focus because it is um, it is one of the most uh, immediate reports on the U.S. economy, as opposed to you know looking at inflation or, or GDP, which is a lagging indicator. So this Friday night, uh, U.S. jobs uh, numbers expected to be about 150k.
Now, moving a bit closer to home, uh, Australia, you've been looking at some uh, private capital investment um, figures out of Australia, and they have made for interesting reading, I believe. Yeah, so Australia reports uh, private capital expenditure data on a uh, on a quarterly basis, and um, it, it gets quite a lot of attention um, in Australia. So, the the numbers last week came in at minus five point two percent quarter on quarter, which was uh, weaker than expected. The market was expecting that to come in at around minus three percent. And overall, the um, if you dig into the the data and some of the um, you know some of the um, the forward-looking aspects of of the investment intentions of Australian firms, um, it's it's looking really really negative. So, um, you know, a lot of people are saying that, that this is really starting to show the end of the investment in uh, in the mining and resources sector in Australia, and uh, that the big concern is that they don't have uh, another sector to pick it pick it up. So it's the, the old classic sort of. Uh, Dutch disease, isn't it? Where a lot of money has been has been guided into the uh, mining and resources sector in Australia, and not a lot of a lot of other sectors have had much uh, much love in recent years. So, I think Australia's. Um, you know, I thought that they were going to come out of the uh, come out of this transition a little bit better, but it does seem as if um, things could get worse before they get better. And obviously, the Reserve Bank of Australia has its uh, its latest review of the cash rate uh, on Tuesday this That's week. That's right. Yeah. Um, are we expecting any change? Uh, not expecting any change there. Um, their cash rate is, is at 2.5%, the same as ours. Um, the market's expectations of another rate cut in Australia has slightly increased, so um, market's expecting about a 40% chance of a rate cut this year, and certainly not uh, not tomorrow, but at some stage um, we still, well, the market thinks that the RBA could see uh, potential to cut rates again. Um, yeah, obviously uh, the RBA will, will no doubt comment on the, the private capex data last week and um, will continue to try and talk the currency down because their their job really at the moment is to try and alleviate um, some of the um, you know some of the offsets that are, that a slowdown in mining investment is bringing and to try and encourage other sectors of the economy to pick it up and, and really you know Australia doesn't have a lot of uh, a, a lot of other um, you know key sectors at the moment that have performed well and actually they need a, a lower Australian dollar to attract um, more capital and potentially to, to make their exporters more competitive. And when we all came back to work in January there was a lot of talk around about the New Zealand dollar reaching parity with the Aussie dollar. How's it tracking on, on, on that at the moment on that front? Yeah, so we the Kiwi Aussie cross rate um, traded all the way up to around 95.60 in the first few weeks of the year. Um, now 95 was considered quite a key technical level. Since then, it um, uh, it's come under a little bit of selling pressure, and recently it's been trading around 92. Although since the uh, data out of Australia last week, we've seen it back up towards 94 cents. And I would say it's probably got more upside potential from here, um, given the backdrop in the Aussie economy and given the relative strength in New Zealand. Uh, I wouldn't, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Kiwi Aussie cross rate well over 95 cents again. Uh, obviously, everyone will talk talk about parity and look potentially if if, if the way we think this year is going to unfold in New Zealand in terms of the rate hikes, um, you know, we could easily see the the Kiwi Aussie cross rate up towards parity. And obviously we, we, we have the next um, Reserve Bank review of the official cash rate in New Zealand on March 13th, so mm -hmm. next week. Now, uh, I think every economist and his or her dog is expecting that Graham Wheeler is going to increase the OCR. Yeah. Um, if he does indeed follow through and do that, what sort of impact is this going to have on the New Zealand dollar? I think for now that's very much priced in. So you know, it's it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. The market's pricing in a hundred percent chance of a rate hike from the RBNZ. Um, it'll be the comments after that. Obviously, um, the market is still pricing in at least a hundred basis points of rate hikes this year. Um, and if uh, if that does unfold as 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 it is expected to, um, with the backdrop of a booming uh, commodity sector in New Zealand. Obviously our, our terms of trade continues to, to, to trade uh, at 40 year highs. Um, business confidence numbers last week coming at a um, 20 year high. Um, the construction sector continuing to, to boom in light of the Christchurch rebuild and um, the housing market around the country remaining pretty solid. So you know you've got the domestic economy firing pretty well in New Zealand, you've got the export side firing pretty well. Um, and that I think is going to continue to f to see further support for the New Zealand dollar. 
I'm surprised that we've actually traded a little bit softer against the likes of the pound and the euro recently, given the outlook in New Zealand. Uh, against the euro, we're sitting around the 60 and a half mark. We've been as high as just over 61 recently. And against the pound, we're sitting just under that 50p level, um, which is uh, m much, much further off the, the recent highs that we had last last year, up or over, over 53 against the P, so against, against the great British pound. So. Um, yeah, I think by the time, if, if we do really start to see these rate hikes kick in, I would say the New Zealand dollar is going to continue to, to trend up against those major, most major currencies. Um, and it's going to be a, an interesting and challenging year for the RBNZ in light of that. Well, thanks a lot for that, Dan. That's Dan Bell from HiFX, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.